Hi, in this video we're gonna talk about probability density function and a type of distribution which is really important in statistics, computer science and other fields and it's called normal distribution. In the following we first talk about how to calculate the probability and the properties of this function. Next we will go through the formula and figure of normal distribution. And at the last section, we will use MATLAB functions to work with data. So stay tuned. Let's start with the importance of normal distribution, which attracts so many applications. Many features in the world satisfy normal distribution if we gather enough samples. Physiological features such as weight, height, strength, and numerical figures such as scores of students in class or price of products and many other things are among the variables that follow normal distribution. Also, normal distribution and probability density function play a key role in central limit theorem. So make sure that you learn it in this video and ask any question you have in the comments below. To calculate probability density function, we need to know the mean of data and variance, which is the square of a standard deviation. Probability density function helps us to realize that how much it's probable to see a certain thing. In probability density, there is a type of distribution, which is called normal distribution. As said earlier, normal distribution is an important type of distribution since we might face it everywhere. So let's talk about normal distribution. Generally, based on the mean which is shown by mu and the variance which is shown by sigma, we have different normal distribution, but there is a standard one. If we consider mean as 0 and the variance as 1, we can gain a standard normal distribution founded on this formula. This is also the figure of a standard normal distribution. The x-axis can be your desired variable such as weight, height, amount of rain, or anything else. The y-axis is probability density, which we talk about it later. In this figure, the mean of data is 0 and the sigma is 1. But there is a general formula of normal distribution, which is a transform of a standard normal distribution. If we move the variable x in the direction of mu and divide it by sigma, and then divide the whole formula by sigma, we reach a general form of normal distribution. Pay close attention to transformation that has occurred. The figure also get different shapes based on the mu and sigma. Consider the blue figure as the standard normal distribution. The green figure is a distribution with sigma 0.6 and the red figure is a normal distribution with sigma of 2. Remember that the mu remains the same in this situation. Now let's change the mu and keep the sigma fixed. The green figure has a mean of minus 2 and the red one has the mu of 3. Sigma is 1 in all of these charts. Finally, here's what happens if we change mu and sigma at the same time. The green figure has a mu of 2 and sigma of 0.6 and the red figure has a mu of minus 2 and sigma of 1.5. Now let's dig deep into the properties of normal distribution. Normal distribution is symmetry at a point of mu. Also, the mu is mean, mode and median at the same time. Since the data is normalized, the area under the curve always equals 1. Also, the figure is unimodal, which means that the figure has only one global maximum point. In other words, its first derivation is positive for all of the points smaller than mu, 
it's negative for all of the points greater than mu and it's zero only at the point equal to mu. Moreover, the figure has two inflection points where the second derivation equals zero. These points are exactly at the points mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma. But the question is, what does sigma do? If you pick a random number from normal distribution, it's 68.2% probable that x is greater than mu minus sigma and is smaller than mu plus sigma. It's 95.4% probable that x is greater than mu minus 2 sigma and is smaller than mu plus 2 sigma. And it's 99.7% probable that x is greater than mu minus 3 sigma and is smaller than mu plus 3 sigma. You can also consider your desired range of sigma and calculate the probability of that range. But how to use and find the probability of a specific point with normal distribution? If you are using discrete variable, you can use this formula. Suppose you have a tool that measures the centimeter, not millimeter. If you measure the height of a group of people, it would follow the normal distribution and based on your samples, the mean of the heights is 118 and the variance is 25. So now you want to know that how much is it probable to face a person that has a height of 182. Simply, using the formula of normal distribution, it's about 7% probable to see a person with 182 centimeter height. However, the method is slightly different if we have a continuous variable. Suppose we have a very precise scale and we want to measure the weight of a group of people which follows normal distribution. Now we want to know that how much is it probable to face a person who is exactly 82 kg, not 81.9, not 81.99, not 82.1 and not 82.001, exactly 82 kg. If you think about this, it seems impossible to find a person who is exactly 82 kg without a gram more or less. This is the reason that the probability of each point in the continuous form is zero, and you cannot simply find the point and look at its value on the figure. Instead, you have to specify a range of weights, which is around 82. For instance, you might say the probability of seeing a person who is heavier than 81.5 kg and lighter than 82.5 kg. This is true method to measure the probability of continuous weights and to do this you should calculate the area between those two points. If you are not familiar with calculus, you can use an approximate method by multiplying the width and height. This gives you an approximation of the probability. This was the fundamental of probability density function and normal distribution. In the following part, we use MATLAB to produce the normal distribution chart and use its optimal functions for probability density function. If you want to calculate the probability density function in a specific range, say for example minus 5 to 5 with a step of 0.1 we can use norm pdf function with a particular normal distribution with mu equals 0 and sigma equals 2. This function uses the discrete formula for probability density that we mentioned in this video because x is kind of discrete variable with a step of 0.1 with a scatter function, we can see the data and the probability density value. As it's clear, the data are separated points and they look like a ring bell. We can also draw the continuous function with plot function. This function connects the points to each other and you can see a continuous normal distribution. 
You may want to create random numbers with normal distribution. To do this, you can use norm RND function. In this function, you should define your desired mu and sigma and the number of rows and columns of data that you want. If you look at the histogram of created data, it's perfectly similar to ring bell, which is the shape of normal distribution. You can also increase the number of pins in the histogram function to see a better shape. Also, you can use RANDN to create an array of random numbers based on a standard normal distribution, which has mu of 0 and sigma of 1. Now, suppose we are given some data. The question is that how we can estimate a normal distribution based on the given data. Remember that data may not follow normal distribution, but we want to estimate a specific normal distribution based on those data. To do this, we can use norm fit function. First returning value contains the estimated mu, and the second one contains the estimated sigma. Histfit also is another function that fits a normal distribution on the given data, withdrawing the histogram and the shape of distribution function at the same time. More academic videos in the fields of mathematics, computer science, machine learning, and tips for writing an academic paper are on the horizon of this channel. Subscribe the channel to be informed by the latest videos and like the video if it helps you to understand this topic. Remember to share your questions, thoughts and feedbacks on the comments below.